Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update this channel daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing what might be the best version of the signature complication of the Jean-Frédéric Dufour era at Zenith. This is the 2010 model year 500-piece limited edition Zenith Striking 10th Jean-Louis Etienne. 42 millimeters in stainless steel. This watch celebrates the French aviator and daredevil whose exploits include flying over the North Pole in a balloon. And this watch marked to celebrate his achievement in that respect is a handsome and versatile piece. You don't need to know anything about the namesake of the edition to love the watch. 42 millimeters in stainless steel. On my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, it wears large, but it fits. It's not a thick watch at 13.3 millimeters with a generously sloped case flank. You also appreciate that it's also a generously stepped case flank with that dramatic box section sapphire somewhat squared off and stepped back from the edge of the bezel. So this one will slide underneath the dress cuff. And lug to lug, two ways to measure this one. There's the lug to lug dimension, which is 50.1 millimeters. But when you include the solid outcropping of the bracelet on each side, it is a beefier 54.4. The spacing between the lugs is a modern 21 millimeters. So the watch really does have the presence on the wrist of something more akin to a 44 or even a 45. This watch has a lot of presence, a lot of stance, and it covers a lot of real estate. I actually wouldn't recommend it for a wrist smaller than perhaps 14 and a half centimeters circumference. So keep that in mind. Now the watch is beautifully executed, starting with a bracelet that goes way beyond expectations. First, every individual link is removable for precise sizing. Also appreciate that the, the flanking links feature a little bit of a scalloped countersunk profile, so they're quite literally seamless. The only gaps are those by design between the center links to vent the wrist on a hot day. Otherwise, the bracelet is entirely seamless. And you'll appreciate the fact that there's a differential finish of both polish and satin with staggered links, staggered alignment, and staggered size. The clasp is quite simply redoubtable. It features a twin trigger design. You must squeeze and push forward to open the clasp. So this one's staying resolutely closed no matter what, and with a double folding action, less likely to pinch your wrist. Now here's where it also impresses. There are multiple micrometric adjustments inside the clasp. So not only can you remove every individual link, but you can size this quite precisely one half millimeter a piece. That is impressive stuff. And the case is simple but strong with a somewhat inwardly sloped and handsome compound curvature about its fully polished side. It's not a thick watch. The lugs are a little bit of a hybrid with a satin finish on the top, a transitional bevel that flares at the edge, a squared off somewhat downturned reverse ducktail at their outer facing, and there's a sharp masculine character to the lugs, whereas there's more of a sinuous curvaceous form that's a bit more feminine about the mid-case, so the watch is well-balanced in that respect. The bezel is quite minimal. It's basically a silver halo outboard of that dramatically sloped and cambered box section sapphire. So the watch is all dialed. By the way, box section sapphires, expensive to make, expensive to spec. Zenith could have cheaped out here and gone flat. Instead, they went with the most expensive option. No corners cut, and that's also true of the dial. Let's see if we can start up the striking tenth here. Got to push it firmly because the Zenith El Primero does have an awfully stiff column wheel action, which incidentally makes it the best feeling column wheel movement on the market. Now, the timepiece has a dished ray hot outboard, so you actually look at 10 seconds because Zenith's reasoning was there's really no way to discern one tenth of a second when it's covering the space of one calibrated second on a 60 second scale. Instead, what this watch does is it accelerates this. 10 second sweep so that one second covers what would ordinarily be six seconds on the dial, making it far easier to read fractions of a second and exploit the full potential of the 36,000 vibration per hour, 10 beat per second El Primero caliber. Quick set for the date, overlapping registers, you do lose the hour register, so that functionality is gone, but most folks aren't going to time anything over an hour with a chronograph anyway. And the outer dial features a very light ruthenium silver coat with dished and blackened sub-registers. Everything is loomed, all applique indices, as you can see for the hours, diamond polished, faceted, and hand applied. There will be a loom shot. There's a date at 6 o'clock, which nicely anchors the dial. If you're going to have a date on this kind of tri-register, it should be at 6, and it features a quick set system. Pump style pushers with a simple guardless crown, Turn it all over, and now we're looking at Zenith El Primero 
caliber 4052B. Now what that means is it's black, so it's been DLC coded to black in it, and this is actually where I prefer to see DLC inside the watch rather than outside. 50 hour power reserve, though less with the chronograph running. It features that 36,000 vibration per hour beat rate, and the first use of silicon in a Zenith watch was the striking tenth. There is this Zenith star-shaped 100 tooth striking tenth wheel with its own separate bridge that operates the striking tenth display. You can see that there is a column wheel nestled amid the levers and horns of the column wheel apparatus, and you can see the striking tenth wheel actually drives that chronograph intermediate against the center far more quickly, about ten times more quickly, or six times more quickly, I should say, than a conventional chronograph. So you can really see that lateral clutch operating, and when it moves out of contact, you can see the recentering hammers acting on the hard cams at center. So the El Primero really keeps no secrets, and it's a big open movement, a 31 joule gem. Over 50 years old next year, it's still a classic, and it is the standard for column wheel pusher feel. All of this 100 meters water resistant, by the way. Now you turn the watch over, and it is simple, unadorned, and essentially a universal watch. If you want a watch that's appropriate anywhere, on any wrist, in any situation, including submergence, this is the ticket. The Zenith El Primero Striking Tenth Jean-Louis Etienne Limited Edition of 500 pieces. See it and make it yours on the watch box.